Damon and Ricky. <laughs> I'm mad. Y'all already know what time it is. I got the black knee neck on. to me happy birthday i am throwing a birthday brunch at negril village on august the 24th and i hope to see you there go to kingaries.com slash shop to get your tickets tickets are limited and i do not have that many so go ahead and purchase your tickets and make sure i see you august the 24th we're gonna kiki we're gonna talk we're gonna enjoy it my birthday is on the 13th but i am doing the brunch on the 24th to get everybody to come but if you are interested in bringing a gift gifts will be accepted there you do not have to bring a gift to come all you have to do is get your ticket and just be there girl we gonna kiki that's that's gonna be the gift for me. But for those who can't attend and want to get me a gift, I do have an Amazon wish list of some of the things that will help the King of Reeves brand and also myself. You can check it out in the description. Thank you all so much. I look forward to seeing you August the 24th. Post season two episode revelations. And did we get some shit that was revealed? Girl, so much to talk about. Let's start from the beginning. What is going on with our guy? Ricky, 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 put it in his kidney, girl. That's what was going on this episode. So last episode, Ricky found out that he was HIV positive. So he's been leaning on Pray Tell for support and guidance and whatever, all of these things. And we saw a little bit of a hint last episode before he even found out that he was positive that he might be interested in Pray Tell. Honestly, after seeing that, I knew it was a high chance of them hooking up and we were going to see that in the script somehow. We were just going to see that. So we saw that within the first five to 10 minutes. And let me tell you something, it's going to be a full-fledged conversation because, girl, it was a lot going on this episode, but this was the biggest moment that had a lot of the girls gagging. So first, let's give Pose their flowers. It was beautiful to see two dark-skinned black men laying up and loving and being intimate with each other. It was beautiful. I loved it. I just love the imagery of it. I just, oh, it just made me feel some type of way. I was just like, yes, this is, I, you never really see this like that. Uh, not we, we've seen you know two black men, but we've never seen two. We don't well we don't see as much two dark skinned black men lay up and be intimate with each other in this type of you know intimate setting. Like it was just like sex. Oh, I loved it. So Ricky was supposed to be going to bed, and what's the name? Closed the door. He said, "All right, girl, good night." Like that's it, child. It's late in Atlanta. I'm tired. I'm gonna go to bed. And Ricky hops in the bed with Pray Tell. And Pray Tell was like, girl, what is you doing? He was like, girl, that, that couch was lumpy. It was a little what's nice. So, like, I'm going to have to come in here and sleep with you. So, he is leaning on Pray Tell. And Pray Tell is looking like, no, this ain't, this ain't, we ain't supposed to be doing nothing. This ain't how it works. And Ricky keeps pushing himself on Pray Tell. And they end up having sex. So, was this wrong? Pray Tell ends up telling his friends during the bottom brunch that, hey, like, I got waxed last night and it was so good and da 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 but girl, wait till I tell you who it was with. And they start talking to him and automatically we see the community like kind of put, you know, pray tell to the fire a little bit like, pray tell, no, this ain't good and what is Damon going to think? Like, that's, you're doing a little too much, that boy's young, but tell us the details. So, was Pray Tell wrong? Was um, Ricky wrong? Who is in the wrong? This is how I honestly feel. I did like that we kept hearing Pray Tell say that Damon is grown. Now, around this time, I think Ricky is around 23 or 24, if I'm not mistaken, around this, this time or whatever. And uh, I'm not sure how old Pray Tell is. Now, a couple of things I was noticing, I was asking a couple of people on social media, what, like, how do people feel about it? A lot of folks were said they didn't like it, um, and that power dynamics are very serious, and a lot of people don't understand power dynamics. Considering that Pray Tell is older, he is in the ballroom community, he's like a leader in the community, he's an elder, like, people look up to him, a lot of folks do, so he should not be doing any of that. And I think some of us are projecting a little bit, um, I think that's what I'm getting from it, because... Yes, we know, especially when we heard Electra say, that's the number one rule in ballroom that you do. The parents do not sleep with their children. Girl, that was really cute, but that's not what's been going on in the ballroom community. Let's just be honest. Um, I wasn't alive during that era, but I have certainly seen plenty of discussions when I was like 18 until now about, you know, folks who are in these communities and sleeping with the folks they're supposed to be helping. Y'all remember that I got famous for the conversation with uh, Milan. What's that boy named Star Milan? 
um, when he was sleeping with his kids and stuff. But in this situation, I have to say that I don't really like feel like it is predatory. I don't think that Pray Tell is preying on uh, Ricky. I'm gonna tell you why. Pray Tell already recognizes that this is not right. This, this is not this is not something that we should be doing. He's thinking about it. We see that. I feel like y'all did a great job posing the writers who ever wrote this episode. Y'all did a good job of like us seeing inside the head of Pray Tell because Pray Tell was showing restraint. He was not as interested in jumping in that. And he didn't provide him how and he didn't provide him guidance or whatever with the notion that he's about to have sex with him. You saw that, like he was like, all right, girl, go to bed, all this, and you can you can see that. Now, the reason why I think people are projecting because we have seen people in positions of power do the complete opposite. And sometimes they'll do things. Now, we all know a story or two of somebody telling us or us being a part of that story where someone was offering someone some place to stay or some money and in hopes that they were going to get something from them. Like, we saw that, but we did not see Pray Tell do that. Now, I'm kind of on the fence of saying that Ricky was praying off of Pray Tell. I really don't know. I think Ricky just enjoys sex. And I think he already had an attraction to Pray Tell anyway. And I feel like the reason why a lot of us are asking, what is going on with Damon? Like, why don't he want him? Because we don't see Pray Tell as desirable. A lot of us don't. So we're trying to wrestle with ourselves of trying to understand why is Ricky not interested in Damon? Like, what is the reason? He must be going through. He might need something. He must need something. But he might honestly just find Pray Tell attractive. He might just be interested in him. And I think that's what they kind of did not make clear too much. Uh, but I, I can see that as a possibility. There might be a possibility that Ricky is sleeping with him. He's a homeless sexual. <laughs> uh, that might be a pops possibility. It's highly likely. But it's also a possibility that he might just be genuinely attracted to Pray Tell. He might just be interested. And I think that's something we have to take into consideration too. Because I think a lot of us are thinking that just because we don't see Pray Tell as desirable, that there's no way for him to find him attractive other than him getting something else of, out of the relationship. But girl, they're laying up and they doing whatever, they both grown. Now somebody called me in and said, hey sis, I'm not here for this. Um, it's the same situation with Lori Harvey and, uh, and um, P. Diddy. Y'all been dragging that and I have been dragging that. But I'm not going to compare a black gay man in the 80s, 90s, or whatever who is living with HIV compared to a cis hetero man who is rich, a cis hetero black man who is a billionaire. Now, I'm not gonna, those are two different things, but I understand why people will say that it might be considered predatory. But we've not seen Pray Tell pray. We've not seen him be predatory. We've not seen that at all. And I think, you know, there was a conversation uh, from my guy Caleb on, on Facebook who was saying that trauma sex is some real stuff. Like, girl, sometimes we are vulnerable in that situation and we just want to be loved. Now, I did like how some people were saying some of y'all will never understand how it is living with HIV and not finding yourself attractive and not wanting to be intimate with anybody else. I will give you prime example. When I first found that I was HIV positive, I did not want to touch myself and I didn't want anybody to touch me for a couple of months. Like, I was I was disgusted by myself. I felt, I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror. I was just like, girl, I, I, I couldn't do anything. I just was not interested. So I think that Pray Tell was vulnerable. And I think we should allow Pray Tell to be vulnerable in that moment. He, we've not seen him be intimate with anybody else. We've not seen him do anything. And girl, we have desires. Like, let's stop acting like we don't have desires. And in that moment, I think it was justified for Pray Tell to be like, you know what? I'm just letting it loose like, girl, no ma'am. But I think it would be different if we see Pray Tell, you know, expect a relationship or, you know, some other stuff. But right now, it's just sex. It's just like sex and that's just it. But I don't think that, I don't see Pray Tell as a predator. I don't see that at all. And I'm just not going to allow folks to say that. Now, I think that morally, yeah, it is unethical. Like, girl, that's wrong because... Damon, 
Like, that is my biggest thing because you are cool with Damon. Like, that's just, that's a lot of hurt. That's a lot of baggage. And we saw that. Also, get into conversation about HIV disclosure, which I did a video about, and I can't wait till you all see. Make sure that you post your questions about HIV and all that. I will be talking to one of my good, good, good friends who is a doctor and who does a lot of work in HIV prevention. We'll be doing a video answering your questions and talking about HIV disclosure. Now, Ricky came to tell um, Damon that he was HIV positive. And do you see how Damon received it? Damon was just like, girl, no, like he just got very angry. And shout out to my good guy, Eric, for telling me that there is more things that come with disclosing. And I didn't think about, you know, violence. Violence is one of those things. Now, we didn't see Damon be violent to, like physically violent to Ricky, but you see how angry he got, how angry he got. And you see how, you know, Ricky took accountability. Ricky said that, Somebody he had had sex with tested positive. So he went to tell Ricky this and see how he showed restraint. Like, I don't want to engage in sex with you because I'm holding information and I want to disclose it. And see how he disclosed it and see how Damon got all upset and da 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 da. But did you see how Damon was about to engage in sex with Ricky with not even asking him uh, about anything, not asking about his sexual health, asking him anything, and not even probably was not even gonna say something about using a condom. So I don't like the fact that we the people who I don't like this exposed. I don't I hate that phrase. I hate someone saying, oh, they exposed me to HIV. No ma'am, no ma'am, I don't like that. And, and that will be a conversation that I've already had in the video. Y'all can check out HIV Disclosure and I will talk about it a little bit more in my next video. But that was a thing we saw Damon get very rowdy and he just went off on Ricky and Ricky left. Now, Damon got a lot going on. He done graduated, he done took all his energy out. He done went and danced for his life, girl. He turned into Sasha Fierce, honey. Um, and he chopped Deshaun Wesley, which I don't really see in real life because Deshaun Wesley is truly talented. So um, we get to the um, the dinner and everybody is, you know, ready to talk. And, you know, you can see there's some tension. We got uh, Lula there. We got Electra there. We got um, the two co-kids. <laughs> we got was it, Angel and Poppy. And uh, we got Blanca and, and Damon is just talking. He, he, taking drinks, he drinking. Angel keeps making jokes about like the dancing career and how this is gonna work out for uh, Damon. And Damon like, look girl, I'm getting rid of some negativity in my life and I'm about to get rid of you. So girl, they go toe to toe. And sis made a joke, Damon made a joke about girl, while you sitting here talking about me, you need to be worried about that coke glow you got. Girl, that coke sweat, that cocaine coming out. And Blanca said, you doing drugs? Girl, I'm like, let me tell y'all something. I'm tired of Blanca's goody two shoes attitude. I'm glad we get a girl's trip with no Lil' Kim next week. <laughs> girl, we need it, cause Blanca needs something. She needs something, girl. She need a win. So they going at each other. And Lula said, girl, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna go. And Lester said, uh-uh, girl, sit down. And Damon got up. Damon said, let me tell you something. So Damon is getting up. He's feeling himself, girl. He's feeling him, his beat. And you got Pray Tell out here trying to tell everybody what's going on. So Damon starts dragging Pray Tell. He said, girl, you want to talk. And when you going to tell such and such that Ricky is positive? And I love how Pray Tell said, that wasn't my business to disclose. I wasn't supposed to tell her like he was supposed to. And Blanca was like, hmm. And I do agree. Like, even though Pray Tell is close to Blanca, that was not Pray Tell's job to tell Blanca that her child is HIV positive. It just was not. That is Ricky's business to disclose that information. Like, I truly believe in that. But Daniel said, girl, not just that, but you sleeping with the man that you been sleeping with. You slept from the 90s. Girl, you saw Pray Tell get up. He done moved the table. I thought it was about to turn to WWE or uh, Real Housewives or something, or Love and Hip Hop. Girl, Damon got out the way. <laughs> Damon moved so quick. And Damon, since if you go sit here and drag and go in, you got to stand firm and your shit, since you had stopped moving around, girl, go ahead and take that security, ain't finna hold nobody back. You talk that, now it's time to get hit, girl. Let's talk about what's going on. They start putting Prey to the fire, like, Girl, that's the one thing in Bob You don't sleep with your kids. Electra is going in and say, you shouldn't have been, you shouldn't have been laying down. You should have been standing up. And once again, Pratel said, Ricky is grown. I am grown, girl. We making our own decisions. But I think that it is okay for them to call out Pratel and say, girl, this does not look right. This does not look right. Because that makes Pray Tell think about it. And I think that's something that's going through his head. Now, for real predators, girl, they ain't out here. First of all, they're not even talking about this like that. And they're not even listening to nobody, give them no type of accountability like that. So, girl, 
I don't want to call or even try to make it seem like that uh, Prey Tale is uh, a predator and that he is using his power dynamics over uh, what's his name. Now, if it becomes a situation where Prey Tale has had a situation where he's always sleeping with somebody who ends up staying with him or somebody he's always got and he's sleeping with the boys in the ballroom community, then I'd be like, all right, Prey Tale, it's time to call you in. But we also have to remember that these people are two consenting adults. We also have to remember that if people want to do that, they should be able to do that. But at the same time, um, I think Prey Tale is understanding that. He is seeking some understanding and, 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 tr and trying to figure out his place. I don't think he's looking for too much. He just said he felt vulnerable. And I feel like he is vulnerable. Like, I feel like in that moment that... I feel like in that moment, he felt like he would never be able to talk to somebody. And it's harder. Like, I remember child when I found out I was positive. I was only talking to folks who was positive because I didn't want to be rejected. Like, girl, I understand. And I'm for people who are so quick to call and say that pray tell is wrong, I'm like, girl, first of all, some of y'all, girl, some of y'all are trash for people who are living with HIV. I've seen enough trash tweets yesterday to make me just block half of y'all ass. But this episode of uh, Pose was good. The writing was good. Some folks said they would have changed a couple of things. Next episode, we're getting a girl's trip. Um, I did like how Blanca was called in from, um, you know, by Damon's um, teacher. I think that is almost a setup to say that Blanca is about to go through something that's going to be life changing. And I'm not sure what it is. We got one more episode before the season finale. My birthday is next Tuesday. Oh my God. I think I'm doing a watch party for the next episode of Pose. Let me know if you are interested. I will be providing an address for everybody who is interested in coming. It's going to be a public event or whatever. Uh, girl, it's going to be bring your own bottle type of situation. We're going to cackle, laugh, and do all this. So let me know if you're interested. I love you so much. Tell me what y'all thought about this episode episode of Pose. Here, what y'all thought about my review. And also, what do y'all think about Ricky and Pray Tales' relationship? Let me know in the comments, and I'll talk to you later on tonight. Bye.